Hello, I'm Rick from Verenix. We're in the micro studio, and this is our first video. <laughs> we're just getting started. We're a little slow. Um, today, what we're going to talk about is outputting your DAW uh, software's outputs into OBS on Linux so that you have more flexibility to uh, input uh, your devices um, into OBS with the type of flexibility that you need. OBS is great. Um, if you have Pulse Audio and all of a sudden everything installed, it's not too difficult to bring audio into uh, OBS. It does get a little challenging if you don't know what you're doing, however, to to bypass the audio direct inputs to Pulse Audio and do some routing through all the DAWs. Now, Linux still makes this easy in comparison to, say, Windows to where you're using, unless you're using Rewire or what have you to rewire everything. Visually, it does get a, a little harder to do. Uh, people use plugins and everything else to try to get the audio from their DAW to uh, OBS. In this case, what we did, um, I'll give you a little overview of the hardware. My audio interface is a, a Mix Pre 6, which is a sound devices product. And you can see it here in the video uh, with the lights turning green. It's sitting on a base, and then on top of it is a uh, a program that shows you your levels and things. I also have a controller uh, here that allows me to adjust things on the fly uh, with a small box. However, I don't want to get too much into the hardware or micro studio tour at this point. I am going to create a video uh, on the studio setup and how I what the studio setup is because this is just a small room and this is absolute. Uh, quality micro studio and I don't mind getting into all the hardware and everything we'll do all that in the next video or a video <laughs> but anyway for now let's take a look at what it takes to get your sound into OBS from a DAW okay and remember this is on Linux so this is a Linux tutorial at least uh, an overview a brief description and some ideas that might help with being able to do something like this. I've been using Linux for a whole lot of years, and it's going on 20 years now. So I'm uh, considered, you know, uh, skilled at Linux. I uh, I do a lot from the, you know, prompt from the terminal. Uh, and I just love Linux. Now, this version of Linux, it's a distro, is Arch Linux. I try to use Arch where I can. And I do a lot of tweaking to the system to allow for low latency and, uh, you know, audio and video production. But this is all new to me, too, as far as getting DAW, you know, the DAWs into, um, into OBS. So let's start off by saying that right now the, what you're hearing for audio isn't coming from anything that's directly connected to um, OBS. Uh, we have a, let me show you here with this screen capture. This will probably mess up, but we'll try this. Uh, my mouse is working. If you take a look here at what I'm pointing at, I guess it's showing it, yeah. I've got two black magic devices, one for my GH5 and one for my X-T3 cameras. Those are going into a, a, my Linux box and being directly recorded into to my uh, Linux box with the Blackmagic 4K capture cards, both cameras. Uh, there's I've got one uh, PCIe card in each two different slots. One's for the X-T3 and one's for the GH5. The audio you're hearing is not coming from the HDMI via the cameras. This is not recorded in that way at the moment. Uh, this is recorded via, via this audio input capture pulse audio. So if you can get pulse audio working with your DAW up to that point, uh, then 
getting this to to input into OBS and not using any direct connection from your input device, which in my case, again, is the Mix Pre 6 from Sound Devices, you're not going to go direct connection. Now, you can inside of OBS, but let me show you how this works, and then, and then we'll get uh, into more of uh, what it takes. Um, I have two cameras going at the same time right now. One of them is showing... Uh, the bigger camera in the background showing uh, my GH5, the Mix Pre 6, the uh, uh, little micro tablet on top that's uh, running a program that's uh, connected uh, to my Mix Pre, so I can see the levels. And, and like I say, here down here, I can adjust uh, everything on this little controller. Okay, so let's get into what we're doing here. Uh, we'll start off by saying that I've got a whole lot of DAWs hooked up. So don't let this confuse you. If you follow follow me close, you'll see that, uh, you know, we've got various different DAWs. Right now, I've got all the DAWs muted that I'm not using. So let's start off with what I do have loaded here. All right. This is the system capture. If this is working right, you can see my mouse move around here on System Capture. We have um, two outputs. Uh, the, my, the sound device's Mix Pre 3 is, is a standards compliant device, but there's no driver for Linux per se to get all the features of its certain, you know, uh, divided input and everything into your DAW. So you can see it's capturing into the system via a stereo output. And if you look at the system here, where it says system and capture one and two, that would be your uh, USB device mix pre uh, six. Now, if you we're gonna go real slow here because this looks confusing, but it's really not. I wanna show you this first. Uh, up here, you'll see what I'm shaking around right here. This is Bitwig Studio. This is what I use uh, for my DAW most of the time. I, I really prefer it. There's a whole lot of things that I like about it on Linux. Next, underneath that, you'll see that I have Reaper loaded. Okay. And right now, the sound is coming through Bitwig Studio. Okay. Just so you know, that's what you're hearing this sound out of. And you're going to hear a difference in quality as I go because I don't have all these configured with compressors and everything that I have on Bitwig. So you'll see a difference uh, in quality as we change these and I mute the other ones out so I can show you that Bitwig Studio Reaper, this is Reaper on Linux, okay? So two ins and two outs is what you'll see with the device that I have hooked up. And then you've got our Doer. Okay, so I'm showing you three different DAWs here, all hooked up, and how to get this all working with Pulse, Pulse Audio Jack. Now, there's a module you're going to need to do this to go from ULSA to Pulse Audio, um, and it's called uh, Module Pulse Audio Jack. You have to have that installed or none of this will work. And on Arch, you just, look, you know, you can look for it in the Arch repositories. I, I don't know if that's on the AUR. I forget where I got that. But you need that installed and, uh, to be able to, to connect uh, this way with your, your Pulse Audio to your jack source. To create that, this creation right here, is what OBS ties to, okay? When you create a, a Pulse Audio jack source in OBS, this is what OBS is, is connecting to. So you can just picture OBS out here, which it doesn't show, but you can picture OBS out here, and this is what it's tied to. So now I use Kasha to do this, and I use Cadence to, to manipulate and, and do things. Uh, these are kind of important to me. I got jack control and other things over here too that I use uh, uh, occasionally. But really, Cadence is, is what I use, and I can, you know, I got a lot of X runs there, but uh, that's over the course of many, many hours. <clears throat> and I'm not too concerned at the moment. But as you can see, we're running Arch Linux 64-bit. Uh, uh, you have to configure Linux, of course, for real time and, uh, you know, create your, your groups, put your user in your group, and make sure your user is part of the real-time process. 
uh, so you can run in real time. If you've got it working right here in Cadence, you'll see that it says real time. Yes, uh, that's important. There's also some other configurations that I do uh, to uh, help uh, with this, with uh, audio on Linux. I'm not going to get into that right now. That's another whole topic as to how to configure all that in Linux. But for now, let's get back to what we have. Now, none of this is configured at all when you start. Okay, basically your capture is coming out of everything or directly hooked up to the Pulse Audio Jack source. So when you open this up and you don't have Reaper, Ardour, and Bitwig and running, your, your DAW running, okay, then what basically what it shows is your Pulse Audio Jack is basically just hooked up to the system capture. Then it goes into Pulse Audio Jack. That'll never work, and all those wires have to be broke. Yeah, the phone's ringing. The wonderful world of recording in your own home studio. Um, see if that quits. Okay, good. Um, so to start off with saying, when you hook this up, you're going to break all the wires between Pulse Audio Jack source. You're just going to take them off all the DAWs, because what you're going to do is you're going to hook up the outputs of each one of these DAWs into the Pulse Audio Jack source so that OBS sitting down here can connect to this. So this is a lot, looks a lot less confusing um, when you uh, first start because you don't see all these wires and everything uh, hooked up. And it just looks real simple. You've got your system playback, your Pulse Audio Sync, and then you've got your source connected to the system. Well, you have to, like I say, break those connections, and you can just right-click and say disconnect, and you can pick what you want to disconnect. And when you create one, you can, which is the, the beauty of wiring through Kasha, because if you want to do something like this and record through bit with and we're going to go over these three DAWs right here i've got them all three hooked up right now so i can show you it's possible with bitwig studio reaper and ardour it's not that difficult uh, bitwig studio being a little more difficult because you have to create the stereo out jack source uh from and I, you have to create your ins which here you'll notice i've got mono in and mono in too. You can do it stereo left and right. This is just how I created it. And then you have to tie that to stereo out jacks right and left in Bitwig Studio. But I can show you where that's at here in a second and show you how to do that. It's really just a few seconds of doing it. And then once you get these, once these are created in Bitwig Studio, they'll show up in Kasha. Then you just drag this down here and wire it right in. Just like that. You're just pulling wires where you want them. All of these outputs have to go into the Pulse Audio Jack source, which is where OBS picks up that source. So right now we've got three DAWs hooked up to Pulse Audio Jack source. Here you'll see we got the source outputs coming. It comes in from the mix pre here, pardon me, into the mono inputs here. All right. And it goes out here. It's also going back to the playback system. But that you have to create these. And you have to create these. And you have to create these. Otherwise, Pulse Audio Jack Source won't work right in OBS when you, when you go to, uh, uh, you know, use your DAW. You just won't get any sound in OBS. So Bitwig Studio is the one we'll, we'll work on first to show you. So let's go to Bitwig. Might take me a second here to bounce around my screens. We got it here. Here we go. Okay, this is Bitwig Studio. This is where I spend most of my time. And you can see I, I've got some EQs and some various different things working. And, and uh, you can see the input volumes. Now, OBS is coming through here, just like I was showing you with the wires and how to wire that. The outputs of my Mix Pre-6 it's via USB, is out into the computer, all right? And uh, then you have your inputs for your also. Your also is your driver for Linux. Anyone working on Linux, I'm quite sure knows that part of it. 
uh, is that also is the driver that you're using. Uh, and basically what Pulse Audio does is it's a bridge. It bridges things together uh, so that you can get your audio wired into the various different uh, things that you want to wire it into. Okay, here I got this. Uh, this is uh, 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 Reaper, sorry. And I've got this muted uh, for a reason because I'm right now, like I say, you can't have all of them work and you might have an issue. I haven't really tried that. But everything else is muted other than just Bitwig Studio right now and what you're listening to. And to show you how Bitwig's working, I'm going to go into OBS. I'm going to go into Bitwig and OBS real quick and show you that this input capture that you're hearing is going to fail. And then you'll see my mouse moving around when we get there. So this is OBS here. And we're going to go to Bitwig Studio. Okay, here we go. And in Bitwig, what we're going to do is I'm going to push this mute. And then you'll see this all over here go gray. And then we're going to go back to OBS and you'll see that there's no input to it. So let's mute. As you can see, when I mute that input from my microphone to the mix pre to the computer, then Bitwig Studio is not sending any signal into OBS. Okay, so this signal right here is coming from Bitwig Studio and none of the other dolls. Like I say, they're all muted. However, you may want to use Reaper or Ardu or, or something other than Bitwig Studio. And I have all three of these working uh, right here. And, and I'll show you basically what you have to do. It's just not that complicated, especially for Reaper, especially for Reaper and for Ardu. There's just a few things you have to do. Now, on the other hand, if you are in uh, Bitwig Studio, one of the things you need to do, I mean, I don't like to be a promoter of any of these softwares. I just find what I like and use it, but I am a fan of Bitwig, as you can see. Um, if you go to the settings in Bitwig Studio and you go down to audio, you'll notice that Jack is selected. Now that means that the transport doesn't work. Nothing works unless Jack's hooked up. In fact, pretty much all these softwares will complain if you have it set for Jack and you don't have Jack working. So when you first install Bitwig, you're going to have a stereo in. You don't have this one created or this one created, which is the two monos that are, that are tied to system capture. I, you need to create these, okay? Because what you're going to do is you're going to tie the outputs to these captured inputs. So you, what you do is you, you create, and I'll show you this in uh, Kasha. Pardon me, but go ahead and, and, and uh, create your two monos. You just hit add mono, add mono, and you'll see it. Make sure you've got the capture selected. And the outputs. Um, by default, you just get speakers, okay? And there's no output for jack source. Now, this is what's nice about uh, Bitwig Studio is it's, it's not that hard to do to add an output. You just add an output. Uh, you can add mono or you can add stereo. In this case, what I did is I added a stereo output. Now, when you add an output like that, it could have been speakers or headphones, okay, or output. When you say output, that means output out of your software. Without this being configured in Bitwig, you cannot get sound into OBS. So you have to select output. When you do, you can come here and once you, if you've got your sound server working and things are configured right with your sound server, you could come down here and you'll see this one called Pulse Audio Jack Source. Now you have to have that module installed, otherwise this won't show up. You need the Pulse Audio mo uh, Jack module for this to work. But once that's installed, you'll see this show up, Pulse Audio Jack Source. And you just select uh, left for one side and then the other side you select right. 
And what that does is it gives you stereo output, no matter what you bring in. If you want to use mono to come in or stereo to come in, you can do that. And then when you output, you output it through that. So when you go to wire, all this stuff starts showing up in Kasha. As soon as you create this, it'll show up in Kasha from Bitwig, okay? And it doesn't show up, and you don't see these things if you don't create it in Bitwig. And like I say, with Ardour and Reaper, it's not quite the same. But we're going to show you that, too. So anyway, right now we are doing our sound through uh, Bitwig Studio into OBS. The next one we're going to look at, we better go here first, though. Let's take a look at uh, the configuration. Okay, so we created the two mono, uh, mono ends, which is what you just saw in Bitwig Studio. Then we tied it to the stereo out jack source. And then what you got to do is you got to create the wires. You just drag down to Pulse Audio Jack Source. Pulse Audio Jack Source is what OBS is using when you create that for your inputs. And this does not come this way. You have to create these things and wire it. But it's so easy to wire. You just drag it into the Pulse Audio Jack Source. And then OBS will, will see that signal out of uh, there. If you don't want to hook another one up, just let it go. <laughs> All right. Um, so you can see that my two outs are going uh, from there. All three DAWs outputs are going into the Pulse Audio Jack source. That's the key. Now on Reaper, let's go to Reaper. There's nothing that you have to do with Reaper. You can see that there's two ins and two outs. If you go to Reaper and go to settings, and we'll change over to Reaper here in a second for the input and to the DAW, and we'll show you that. But let's go to, uh, I think it's preferences. I don't use this that much. Okay, yeah. You can see up here, it says 96 kilohertz, 24-bit wave, and two channels in, two channels out. And it even shows Jack running here at the back end of it. Well, if you don't have Jack running, this is going to complain, too. They all do. Uh, and that you, you can uh, set this to auto start, but I wouldn't. I'd go ahead and use Cadence uh, for that type of work on Linux. It just makes things a whole lot easier if you want to run multiple uh, racks or things or, you know, uh, different uh, products. So you can see Jack's running. This was the by default two ins and two outs. There's nothing to do in here. Nothing at all to do inside of Reaper. Your work for Reapers is done here. And what you do when you first hook this up, the outputs, uh, the inputs and the outputs aren't right. Okay, you have to have your input, which in my case, you're my again, it's the mix pre six capturing from the microphone going into the inputs of Reaper, and then the two outputs in Reaper go. You need to draw the wires again to the input right and left side of Pulse Audio Jack Source. Okay, um, once you do that. Now, again, you see two wires coming out going in here from Bitwig, two wires coming in and out out of Reaper into Pulse Audio Jack. And then on Ardour, you have two, two lines out going in. I forgot to create the other capture. <laughs> I got to create another capture, too. Uh, that's okay. We'll still get the audio working here in a sec with Ardour, too. Okay, so you can see Pulse Audio Jack, and then all the outputs are connecting to Pulse Audio Jack. This is just the key for OBS, okay? And I don't care which one of these you use. They're all hooked up to Pulse Audio Jack server. So now we're going to mute um, Bitwig, and we're going to unmute Reaper, and you're going to see that Reaper works and Ardour works just the same. Now on Ardour... Uh, just take your audio out one and two and run it right and left into Pulse Audio Jack. That's all you have to do there. And then you can get your sound out of there too. But like I say, with Bitwig, you have to create these outputs and wire it. With Reaper, it, the, it basically when you turn Reaper on uh, and, and fire it up, the two captures are going directly from the system interface uh, that you have into Reaper. But there's no outputs hooked up. 
And if it was, it would be going to the system's playback. So you're not going to have any Pulse Audio jack source hooked up to Reaper when you first get to this. And that's the key for Reaper is you want to make sure that you tie, you draw your wire into inputs of Pulse Audio Jack. You can leave the systems playback and everything just like it is. Doesn't hurt a thing. Um, when you get into monitoring and things like that, you might want to change things around a little bit. Like I say right now, all this looks complicated, but it's really not. You just need to make sure these outputs are there and that they're all tied into Pulse, Pulse Audio Jack uh, source. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go to Reaper. Let's go to, uh, I'm going to lose you, and then you're going to get all sorts of different types of sounds and everything out of this. Pardon me. Uh, you're going to get all sorts of different kinds of sounds out of this because this is all set up for what I was working on and for sound, and I don't have Reaper or Ardu or no plugins, no nothing in it. So let me mute this. Okay, if this worked right, you're hearing me through Reaper now. Let's see. Okay, you are hearing me through Reaper. Now again, to show you that this that there's no inputs from that are working on here directly into OBS, I'll go back to Reaper. Okay, and I'm going to mute this and then I'll show you that I'm not getting any inputs. Right? You have I think you have to have them muted. I haven't tried to run all three of these at once, but it would, would be useless to do that anyway. But let's go ahead and let's mute this again. Okay, so we muted um, Reaper on Linux. And... Um, you know, you don't have uh, any output uh, because we have it wired correctly. Uh, you don't have any output. So again, OBS is getting all of its sound right now through here, through Reaper. And uh, that might be something you might look into if you're a Reaper fan. Uh, you can hook up your all the different VSTs and, and I guess LV2s or whatever they have for plugins and and uh, come up with your sound through Reaper here. Okay, we're going to go to our doer next. And again, let's go back here for a second and look at the, uh, well, if I can find it. Um, this certainly isn't production quality. <laughs> but anyway, if we take a look at our doer, you'll see that the audio input or audio outputs rather. One and two, again, I had to wire those into the Pulse Audio Jack source. Again, our, our doer will show up just pretty much like this when you fire it up in Kasha. So the only thing you really have to do with our doer, it's going to have your two outs coming up to the playback system, which is your speakers or whatever you want to use uh, to for your uh, sync. Okay, if you want to use speakers or what have you, this this will work fine that way but you have no inputs that you can or outputs out of or do or hooked up to the pulse audio jack server so you can use this in obs so again uh let's go back here and let's see we're still in uh reaper let's mute this and then we're going to fire up our doer i can see the mute Okay, I unmuted our door. If this worked, you should hear me. <laughs> Notice none of these are recording anything. The recordings are through OBS again. So go back to OBS. You can see I've got signal coming in. Uh, the Bitwig shut off. It's muted. Uh, Reaper's muted. And now we have our door hooked up. And if this goes well, you should see. Uh, you should see. Uh, the sound 
working properly, at least to that point. Now, on Ardour, if you go to, let's see, I, I don't know a whole lot about Ardour. I, I can get around in it, I guess, but it's not something, I'm sure, I think Ardour actually has its own wiring type setup, too, in it. But I don't know. Okay, right here's preferences. Uh, if you go to your, let's see. Uh, sessions. Audio. Okay, that's not quite right. Well, I was in here. I can't remember where everything's at, though. Station snap mixer. Okay. Transport. Uh, Plugin. Well, I can't remember where that setting's at. Well, anyhow, for your ins and outs and everything, for your, there's nothing you have to do. Like I say, when you fire this up, uh, it pretty much uh, works. And the only thing that you have to do with Ardour is uh, to get this working as an input for OBS. Remember, all you need is one pulse audio connection. That's something you might want to remember, is if you wire this correctly and you can mute all you want, you only need one connection to capture your pulse audio output with. So it, all your real work is done in Kasha when you wire this, and it just makes it so much nicer. Now, if I break a wire here between any of these, you'll see all the sound go off. They have to go into the pulse audio jack source, which is what OBS is using to connect to. So right now, we're in Ardour. Now we've gone over Bitwig Studio and that you have to create the mono ins and outs or stereo wins. And then you have to create the stereo outs and you have to wire that into the pulse salt source. And again, you just drag and say, go in. And if you don't want the wire, just bring it out there and let it go. And you do for left and right and uh, bring it into here and you can use that. Uh, for uh, Reaper, uh, it just has one in and out what it's showing there. So uh, again, by default, these are usually just wired directly into pulse. But if you want to bypass um, the pulse and, and put these in the middle, this is what we did. We went from the system, the pulse connection, and we put our Bitwig, Reaper, and Ardour in the middle of it. And we didn't allow any direct connections from our microphone in our input capture to Pulse Audio Jack. We made it go through uh, our DAWs, and that's the whole point of this. So if you take a look here at, at Ardour, uh, these are all show up as soon as you fire Ardour. Just grab your audio outs and run those into the Pulse Audio Jack source. That's how it's done. And I wanted to show you that if, you, if you're not, you know, if you don't have Bitwig Studio, this is commercial. I, I pay for this uh, Bitwig Studio. And I paid for Reaper too, but you know, you pay one time a small fee uh, and they don't ask for any more money. And in our doors, free and open source. So you can use uh, any one of these three to do this with and it'll work just fine. Uh, there's no other wires to wire out of your jack source. Once you get your Pulse Audio jack source set up for inputs, you just tie whatever programs over here that you don't see like OBS into this. And all these outputs, nothing's direct to Pulse Audio Jack server no more, uh, to the source. So this is how it works. And I'm going to go back here. Uh, that's muted. Let's go back to here. I'm going to mute this and put this back on uh, what I use most of the time. Check testing, one, two, check. Okay, if that worked, we should be using, uh, check, yeah. Okay, we're back, and we're using, uh, let's see here. I'll get better at this. <laughs> so anyway, this is just a brief discussion of what you can do to get your OBS hooked up to a DAW on the back end. And like I say, if you just think of your input device, whatever you want to use for your, your uh, you know, capture device, 
it could be any card, uh, any mixer, anything that you have, whatever you have coming into it that has a driver that shows up when you do LS USB or LS PCI. If you see your device listed, then it should it should be working as a standard device. And you, all you need stereo in really for single mics. If, if you want to divide eight mics or something like that or four mics or something like that into individual channels for for different things you 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 would be better off that way but again there's no linux driver per se for the sound devices mix pre six so this is how i do it um well that's being said um obs will accept any any one of your daw signals uh provided you set up your audio input capture for pulse audio and that's all you have to do in OBS too. There's nothing else you have to do. You could set your levels and things like that here, add a filter or two if you really wanted to. But the benefit, like I say, of doing it this way, there, there's a couple of directions I have. Being I have, uh, uh, you know, I'll show you this. Being I have two black magic cards via HDMI, I've got another wire coming out of my camera that goes... Um, into the uh, Mix Pre 6, and if I want to, I can just record via my my GH5 uh, camera uh, via HDMI input. However, that leaves things a little unflexible too when you run an HDMI. Um, you're not getting the type of flexibility you need between the Mix Pre uh, 6 and a DAW. You have a lot of flexibility with the HDMI. You really don't. Um, you have what you have in OBS with these devices for filters and things for, for audio, but you don't have the ability to, um, you know, do what we're doing here. So again, this is what it looks like. And uh, coming in, there's not a whole lot you can do or that you need to do once you get your audio capture set up to pulse audio in OBS. There's just not a whole lot to do there. All your work's really in the wiring in Kasha. So this is where all your work's at. So again, we got Bitwig Studio working. And I guess this is about it for this video. We are going to... Uh, be doing a small studio tour here, and I'm going to show basically what equipment I use. Uh, you got a little bit of a gist out of it just by looking at uh, the videos here, but I'm going to go over uh, how I wire things all together with the PC and and uh, Linux, and we're going to be doing a lot of Linux stuff anyway over the over time. But this is just to get a video out. I haven't even produced a video. This is the first one. And I'm just trying to get a video out and show you how to use Kasha, Linux, and OBS and output the sources, like I say, of your audio device. Break the chain directly uh, that's coming directly uh, from your mic to Pulse Audio uh, source and put your mixers, your DAWs in between and then wire, you know, your DAW to Pulse and that's what I've shown, and I hope it makes sense. If you need any help, uh, go ahead and put uh, some comments or something below this, and I'll try to help out where I can and uh, see if we can get you up and running if you're on Linux and you're wanting to do something like this. But anyway, appreciate you watching. Take care, and have a good one.